Welcome everyone to this sixth of nine rounds of our 2023 Cubica AMF Bowling Promotion Tour Masters Series Stepladder. As you can see, Lindsay Boomershine of the U.S. defeated two Colombians in our first two matches. Then she fell to Liz Johnson, who's been averaging just under 250 in her last three wins against Lindsay, then Otolora of Colombia and Jolif of France giving Liz the right now to face Matt McNeil, the smooth-stroking left-hander from the U.S., who averaged over 230 in his 18 games of qualifying. And it will be Matt kicking things off on the left lane. And here he goes, this beautiful stroke, and comes up for a mixer 10-pin to kick things off. Matt, of course, is employed by Storm and is a PWBA ball rep. <laughs> so he actually reps Liz on the ladies' tour. And so let's see if he gives her any advice about this match. Uh, he started off what looks like a uh, infinite physics, a more aggressive ball and went left and straight at the pocket, left that mixer 10. Let's see how he adapts to this gateway arch oil pattern. 42 feet, fair bit of ratio, and you can see Matt just stroking over for the 10 pin. And here is Liz, as we said, averaging about one pin under 250 for her first three games, and she does get an eight pin handicap by international rule whenever Ladies Bowl men, they get an 8-pin advantage. And there is Liz right up the lane, ringing 10 to kick things off. Liz has been striking at will pretty much on this, on this pattern, even as it changes. This is, as we said, our sixth round. And we only had one left-hander. So here is Liz now cross lane to the 10 pin and definitely seeing some transition on that right side pretty much because she's the one carving it right up the 10 board so and here she has no trouble covering the 10 pin and let's see how she does now with the left hand lane again this lane has been proving to be a little bit drier she actually lost a roll off on this lane having the ball go high through the through the face. Let's see her shot here. That's right up 10. Oh, same place, but look at that. Same problem. Ball hits the mid lane and turns left and go up, goes up through the beak. Does not leave her a split. So luckily she's got a makeable spare. And she'll have to make an adjustment off of that shot clearly. Even though she's coming off a big gain on these two lanes, they can change very, very quickly. So she moves right with her Lucy mixed doubles spare ball and no trouble on the spare for Liz. As we said, Liz gets an eight pin advantage to kick things off and we will calculate that into the score as we go along. Here is McNeil and Matt with really nothing short of dominance at the USBC Open Championships. He's got four titles, including the all events all-time record and there is a beautiful stroke right up the lane and perfect flush strike for Matt as we said he's about two arrows left of where Jolief was playing these lanes the two-handed lefty and Matt stroking it right up the five six seven board again using that infinite physics looks like it's got a little bit of polish on it so it's not as aggressive as it otherwise would be out of the box left lane. Left to mixer 10 last time. Straight at it. A little bit of hop at the line there, but perfect flush strike in the pocket, giving Matt the early double. And the lead over Liz by just a couple of pins. And good shot there by Matt. Straight at it. Matt leaving nothing to chance. Going, Not trying to cross a lot of boards. Just go straight up the lane, right at the pocket. Similar to how Liz is playing them. on this right lane. It's right up about the 11 board. Perfect shot. Flush strike for Liz Johnson in the third. Matching O'Neal. And now we have O'Neal with a three pin lead. And Liz can take the lead back if she can strike here on this left lane. Once again, she came up high last time. Let's see what move she makes. 
problem is these lanes are starting to cliff a little bit if she moves in too much, and too much might even be two boards. She could catch some oil and not get it back up to the pocket. She throws the shot here. Yep, that's in a border two. Sure enough, look at what happens. It catches the oil and goes down the lane and leaves the 2-4. So now she's gone high and she's gone light, and she's like, now what do I do? Do I try to split the difference? And it would be very interesting to see what happens to her next shot on this left-hand lane. And this leaves another makeable spare, the 2-4. And no problem with that spare. And once again, we have a three-pin match. <coughs> now McNeil is on the uh, PBA team's Adam, uh, Silver Lake Adam splitters on the PBA League where they won a title. And he has also been on Team Vega winning a title here in this bowling promotion tour series. And he comes up on the right lane and no, gets the flat seven. Look at the ball jump as it hits. He says, and Matt jumps as well, trying to get some carry. And could not find a way to extend his double. He says, oh, oh no, thank you for that non-carry. Looks like he's moving over to a... A moss. Look at how he uses his last two fingers on the spare. And that is in order to take revolutions off the ball, and he does, and throws it straight at the seven pin. No problem on the carry there. And now Matt moving over to the left lane. Let's see what he can do here. Again, okay, we, we were expecting maybe a few more strikes in this, but we'll see how the bowlers adjust as we move through into this fifth frame. Again, a little high in the pocket there in that left lane. He says safe. No split once again. Now he leaves the 6-10 spare. So I think he expected a little bit easier time into the pocket. Comes up a little bit high. And there is the 6-10. Cubica AMF Strike Tour Series is a special event organized by Bowling Promotion for the French Federation and the French Olympic Sport Channel for the promotion of bowling and the French teams in spe specifically. Cubic AMF has signed on for a three-year commitment to sponsor this Master Series, so thank you so much to Cubic AMF for that sponsorship. And Matt, of course, no trouble on the 6-10 conversion. Let's see how Liz does here. With that eight, with that eight count, Matt's lead is down to a single pin. See what Liz can do here on the right lane. Straight up 10. Gets the mixer. Oh, ho! The 4, 5, 7 going very late. She's had other hits like that on this lane. Let's watch the action of the head pin. Let's watch the head pin go over to the sideboard, spin around and take out both the 4 and the 7. And then we saw a little bit of mixer action on the 5 and giving her the strike. And once again, we have exactly a one-pin match through five. Couldn't ask for better than this. Let's see if Liz can double up and take the lead. And again, she's been high and she's been light on this left lane. What will she do here? And straight at it, splits the difference. Mixer seven, good shot. Could have gone easily, but can't quite get it to go. Looks like she exactly split the difference between the last two shots. That's right up about the 11 board. Right up into the pocket like, like she's been doing. But leaves the mixer seven. So can't find a way to double here through six frames, Liz. Un, very un uncharacteristic compared to her last few matches. By now she would have strings of strikes going. And covers the spare, no problem. Keep working. And here is Matt. Can he open it up and figure out a way to put some strikes together here? Kind of a nip and tuck match. Once again, Matt with a straight up approach. No nonsense. Right at the pocket. 
with his hand right behind it, trying not to get a lot of side spin. And again, straight at the pocket and smashes out the seven pin for the carry on the right lane. Watch the seven pin get toppled over. You might think this might be a weak seven hit, but it gets toppled and a messenger across as well. So there's a strike now. Can Matt double up and extend his one pin lead to 11? And neither bowler are able to really grab the upper hand here. Nip and tuck match. Stroke. Oh, we got that one left. Oh, Lord. Very unusual for Matt. Look like he got a little fast. Look like he got it a little too far behind his back. He missed his mark to the left. Threw it too fast. Washout for Matt McNeil. Very uncharacteristic. He was way behind his back, and he just kind of got a little bit far left and a little ahead of himself. And now leaves the one, three, six, seven washout. And see if he can take this loss of spare ball and cover it up. Who's got a chance? And he makes it. Great shot by Matt McNeil covering the washout. And because he was on a strike, that's just like nine spare. So no, no harm, no foul there for Matt. Keeps his one pin lead. What a key spare that was in a tight match. And recovered like the pro he is. And let's see what Liz can do here. Can she finally figure out a way to double? Got to get the first one, though, on this right-hand lane. She struck her last two times on this lane. And right up 11, turn it up, slap the 10. Three strikes on that right-hand lane, good shots. Now over to the challenging lane. Look at that, right over the 10 board. Makes a turn on the mid lane just enough to slap the 10 out. She was worried about either a weak 10 or a solid 10 on that shot, but does get the carry. And let's see what she can do on this left lane. Can she finally solve it? Figure out how to strike. She's been having her way with this lane in the last few, shot, last few matches. But this transition is starting to get her. Let's see what she does here. She knows she has to go straight at it. And she does right at it. And it's high flush. Perfect shot. Slaps the seven out late. And there is the double for Liz Johnson to claim the lead. Nip and tuck here. This match. And it will be a nine pin lead for Liz Johnson right now. And Matt will need to double to get his one pin lead back. And again, right behind it, stroke it right up the lane, get that forward roll, gets the strike. And now he says, what am I gonna do on this left lane that has not been my friend? And again, Matt also striking on the right lane and struggling on the left lane. And flushes that one. Beautiful shot. All right, what are we going to do here? We just went washout. Before that, we went high for a 6-10. So what do we do? And before that, we struck. So what do we do on this lane? Well, right at it. Little hop straight at it. How about we flush it in the pocket? Perfect shot. And there's the double for Matt again. Back to a one-pin lead. Look at this. That's about right up the eight board, maybe. A little bit inside of where he's been. Perfect shot up the lane. And give Matt the double. Moving into the ninth frame. What a match. Now Liz, of course, can go 246 here. And Matt pacing to 237. So Liz does have ball in hand. She can close out the match here by throwing three strikes. And here's her shot here. That's right up the 11. Oh, light on the right-hand lane. I think she got that in a board or two and maybe a little fast. And unfortunately leaves a little half of the bucket. That's right up the 11 board. Look at it catch the oil. 
mid in the mid lane does not make the turn and leaves the five eight. Giving her a deficit now of three pins against Matt. And she comes up and no trouble on the five eight conversion. Now here's the situation. Liz is down. She's down by three pins. If she can double and put herself up, she can force Matt to get the first one in the tenth. And again, she's on her more challenging lane, but she just threw a perfect strike in her last shot. Let's see what she does here. Again, if she can double, she can put some pressure on Matt. If not, Matt will just need a mark to win and move on to face Jack Blythe of England. And good shot there by Liz. Oh, gets the mixer. Gets the first one of the 10th. Very important. Now, this next one is all important to get it and force McNeil to strike in the 10th. Look at that, right over 10. Boy, she's just all around that second arrow. Comes up and gets the mixer, slaps the four back across the deck. She says, come on. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is the shot right here to take the lead in the 10th. Liz Johnson. Comes up. Good shot. Oh, perfect flush strike. Vortex strike, as we call that one. Absolutely perfect when she needed it. All of her nibbling around the pocket has paid off in this shot right here. Look at this. Right up the lane. Perfect speed. Absolutely flush through the pocket. Beautiful shot. Liz Johnson takes the lead. Now the pressure back on McNeil. Can he get the first one in the 10th to win the match? And there's going to be, yep, three in the 10th for Liz. Let's give her the 224 with her handicap. And now Matt must have the first strike if he's interested in winning. Right now he's at a 217 pace. He's got to have the first one and decent count. But the first one is everything. This is the shot. Sets up. Ball away. Right up the lane. Oh, a mixer 10 pin. Oh, what a good shot by Matt. Not rewarded. Oh, he's frustrated, and why not? He made the shot. That was a good shot. It was a little bit light in the pocket. Maybe he wished it would have been a little more flush. But that was a good shot. Good enough to strike, certainly. And Matt McNeil will be Liz's fourth victim. And she will move on to face Jack Blythe. The winner of that match on to, to face Danielle McEwen and then Dennis Goodenheim. Boy, and of course that one goes for Matt. Matt cannot pull out the win against Liz Johnson. But what a great match we saw here, folks. And we'll see some of these finished statistics. And then we will see the interview, interview with Matt and Mark Chavez. And let's see. Let's look at our stats here. And... Um, Boy, Liz escaping that match. And Liz with uh, seven strikes, five spares. And Matt with uh, six strikes, five spares. 224 to 216. Of course, Liz with the extra shot in the 10th. Wow, Liz pulling this one out. They actually tied uh, Scratch. <laughs> so it was Liz's eight pin handicap once again that gets her through the match. So here's our interview with Matt McNeil. Match âprement disputé là encore entre Liz Johnson et Matt McNeil. Ça s'est réglé et ça s'est joué sur une seule boule, la dixième frame. Matt McNeil qui est passé juste un petit peu à côté, la 10, qui n'a pas voulu se coucher. Matt, it all came down to that one single shot, frame 10, the 10 pin just staying up there, unable to go horizontally. How does it feel when a match is determined on that one single shot? Well, I let it get to that point. I definitely had good ball reaction. I just didn't make enough good shots leading up to that point. And had I done that, it wouldn't have come down to that one shot. But I let it happen. You let a Hall of Famer like Liz Johnson stick around, she's going to find a way to be competitive. And that was what I did. And that's my mistake. And just not a good, 
not enough good shots on my part, and she made a great out to force me to strike. So hats off to her. Matt est très, très élégant dans sa défaite. Il dit voilà, j'ai laissé la situation un petit peu dépérir. C'est de ma faute qu'on en soit arrivé là, que tout se joue sur cette boule. Et quand on laisse évidemment à une membre du temple de la renommée comme Liz Johnson le loisir de revenir dans une rencontre, forcément, je me suis mis un petit peu dans cette situation embarrassante. Matt, it's been a tremendous couple of days here in, on French soil. Uh, it's all coming to an end. We're going to pull the curtain down in a few in a few moments now. What are you going to walk away with? What are you going to take back home? What are the impressions of your mini Tour de France here this year? Oh, it's a great experience. I love coming to France. Um, I love the culture. I love the food, the history. It's it, the people are everybody's great here. So it's an honor for me to come here and compete. And uh, just a great week of memories with friends and meeting new people and getting to do new things. So I'm I'm already looking forward to 2023. Matt le dit, c'était super, ça a été vraiment un plaisir, j'adore la France, j'aime la nourriture, la culture, les gens, et vraiment ça a été une super expérience, et, et j'ai passé un bon moment avec des amis que j'avais déjà, puis d'autres que j'ai rencontrés sur cette belle tournée, et j'ai hâte de revenir en l'an de grâce 2023. Matt McNeil, thank you so much.